Is it your car that's been stolen? Yeah. How long ago? About ten minutes. Look, who called you? The car park attendant. Mr. Shaw. You all right? It's nothing. I just banged it. Right, OK, why don't you talk to Mr. Shaw? Yeah, we need to find your car as quickly as possible, so I need the make, model, colour. Mercedes SLK, convertible, dark blue. Registration number? KSL 100. Look, there's really no point in making a fuss about all of this. I'm sure the car will either be burned out or on its way to Eastern Europe by now. End of story. Well, let's hope not, eh? Sharon Oscar from 5-4. Go ahead. Yeah, I've got the details of that stolen vehicle for you. Cheers. Right, your car details have been circulated, so I just need to find out exactly what happened. <sighs> Must we? Let's start again, shall we? I'm Sergeant Smith from Sun Hill, and you are? Louise Roberts. There you go. Wasn't that painful, was it, Miss Roberts? So, where do you live? Islington. And what are you doing in Sun Hill? Just passing through. In a multi-story car park? That's right. We have the car registered to a Mrs Louise Larson of 28 Lavender Crescent. Would that be you as well? Yes, it is. I use both names. And is this your home address? Yes. How are you planning on getting home? Have you got enough money for a cab? No, my husband will send a car. Good. By the way, why didn't you call us straight away? There's no way you're going to find the car anyway, so I'm not exactly sure why we're bothering with all of this. Amazingly, they do turn up. And we'd like to catch whoever did it. You see, it's our job. It'd be a little bit easier if we turned up and everyone went, oh, no, it's fine, don't bother finding my expensive motor that's just been nicked by some bloke. So what happened? I came back from the ticket machine and these lads... What, did they threaten you? One of them grabbed the keys out of my hands and he pushed me. And I fell over and banged my elbow. Did he say anything? Maybe. Nothing worth publishing. What did he look like? Ooh, what was he? Black, white, Asian? White. Hair colour? Wasn't really interested in his hair. See, it's not whether you were interested, it's whether any details stick out. Well, no little details stick out about his hair. Fine. Height. Same as you, maybe? A little bit shorter? Build. Average. What age? Who knows? 17, 18? Without cutting their heads off and counting the rings, it's hard to tell, isn't it? What was he wearing? Some kind of dark top with a hood. It was over so quickly, I barely saw him. Now, you said lads, so how many of them was there? There was another one. He was sort of lurking about in the shadows. I didn't see him at all. We haven't really got a lot to go on so far. Never mind. I'm just going to go and have a chat with my colleague over there. You going to be all right here for a minute? Fine. Hmm. The attendant was no help hiding the lads. He only saw the end of it after the bloke who drove off in the car had pulled a knife on him. After you what? Well, she didn't mention that. But then, she hasn't mentioned very much at all. She might be in shock or scared. No, I don't think so. It's more like she just doesn't want to help. Maybe she's in on it with the lads. Insurance job. Or she owes them money. Or she owes someone they're working for. Whatever it is, she's hiding something. Well, we can't stand around here all day waiting for her to say something interesting, so let's go and rattle her cage. Call me when you pick this up, OK? Miss Roberts, I'd just like to clear something up with you. The attendant says that he saw the lad who took your keys pull a knife on you. Can you confirm that? To be honest with you, I just want to forget about all of this. Either the car turns up or it doesn't. If it doesn't, the insurers will pay. So I don't want to get involved. But you are involved. They pulled a knife on you. You could have been killed. Well, they didn't. But maybe, when you're over the shock, you'll be angry and you'll want to do something about it. And maybe then, you'll remember something, yeah? It's possible. Good. Right, so look. Here's my number. If you remember anything, anything at all, right, no matter how small, give me a call. Right now, I better take your number. Do you have to? Well, I'd appreciate it, yeah. I mean, I might have some more questions that you don't want to answer. Well, you've got my address. You might have to put your questions in writing instead. I have to go. No, I haven't finished yet. I need a contact number. Uh, excuse me. I can't see what your problem is. Why don't you want to help us with this? 5-4 from Sierra Oscar receiving. Go ahead. Second carjacking at junction at Denzel Street and Lark Mead Road. Male victim has head injuries and has been taken to St Hughes. Suspect's descriptions are similar to your incident. 
received. Make your way over to the hospital, see if you can get some details and some descriptions, all right? OK, Sarge. Did you hear that? Seems like you've been very lucky. They've just put a bloke in hospital now. It's got nothing to do with me. Yes, it has. Right now, you've got no way of getting home, so you can come with me. What? We're going to drive around the area and look for these suspects. You're our best bet to identify at least one of them before they kill someone. So get in the car. <sighs> Any news on the victim, Leela? Not good, Sarge. The doctors are worried about possible brain hemorrhaging. There's no chance of talking to him. OK, thanks. Sounds like I was lucky. Any sign of him? No. So is this what we do then? We just drive about and it seems a bit aimless. Well, it isn't. They've struck twice in a two-mile radius. The chances are they're still in the area. You didn't tell me what you were doing in Sun Hill. It's not a particularly interesting reason. Well, try me. No. You're not going to tell me? No, why should I? Is it a vital piece of information in the solving of this crime? Well, I don't know until you told me. You see, sometimes it's the smallest detail about someone or something that tells us the most. And what do the small details say about you, Sergeant Smith? Let's see. For a start, you're not married. Well, that's not exactly difficult, is it? But you don't live with anyone either, do you? How do you know that? Because you're wearing slightly too much aftershave. Too much for the inside of a small car, anyway. A woman would be sensitive to that. When she kissed you goodbye in the morning, she'd tell you. Am I right? Possibly. That means yes. So what else do we know? Your late 20s, doing pretty well to be a sergeant by now. Local boy from the accent. I expect you've got a smart, bare little flat somewhere not too far away from here. Big, widescreen telly and not much else. No clutter, white walls, sanded floors, which you did yourself because you couldn't afford that nice laminate stuff. What is this? Changing rooms? And no partner. You don't know that. You're dedicated to your job. That's why you made sergeant, because you've got nothing else to worry about, apart from going to the gym. Maybe a couple of times a week by the look of you. Oh, thanks. You've had relationships, but let's face it, work just gets in the way. Do you fancy a job in CID? You couldn't afford me. <sighs> no, thanks. I'm fine. OK. Now that I think about it, it makes sense that you're not bothered about a car. I mean, it doesn't matter to people like you, does it? Or well, people like me. And who are they? People with money. Now, I bet you're probably married to a very wealthy man. Let me take those boots. They're at least 300 quid's worth. They were in the sale and I paid for them with my own money. I bet you've never even done the housework or the washing up, come to think of it. Why is that? Look at your nails. And then there's your hair. That's at least once a week and it's going to take longer than a lunch hour. So, you've got some leisure time, which means you don't work, which means it's paid for by a wealthy bloke. Now, that brings me back to the question, what were you doing hanging around Sun Hill? It's them. Uh, what the hell do you think you're doing? They're the ones who stole my car. Yeah, all right, but you're going to sit there and you're going to stay put, all right? Are you sure that these are the carjackers? Because earlier you weren't certain of anything. Look, I'm telling you, it's them. Well, which one attacked you? The one on the right. It's your Oscar from 5 4. Go ahead. The victim was identified the carjackers, High Street, junction of Dolphin Alley. Now, I believe that they may be targeting a Gold Astra new model. Can I have units to assist now, please? 5 4 from Sierra Oscar, received. Assistance? They're only kids. Yeah, with knives and are prepared to use them. I'm not stupid like you. Ah, it's interesting they got to the Astra. They probably wouldn't have done it with the previous model. Only, of course, this one is a quantum leap forward in design zone. Oh, shut up, Rich. Nice to have you back, Tony. By four, you have several units running and a bus for a Trojan unit. Sierra One, what's your running time to Gunner Street? The suspects are about to hit the drive and I'm alone with the first victim. We're in heavy traffic, Sarge. Five minutes away. It's going down now. <laughs> You sure? Right, you call an ambulance and don't touch the knife. Sierra Oscar from 5 4. 
Gold Astra, index kilo Foxtrot 05, Victor Whiskey Tango, headed south on Gunner Street. That went well. Yeah, get in the car. Put your seatbelt on. It's creasing my coat. It'll do more than that if you go through the windscreen. Thank you so much for caring. Yeah, I don't. I just don't need the paper. There's an alleyway down there. No, there isn't. Yes, there is. I know this area. Just back up and take a look. <laughs> Told you. Stay there. There's another one round about. I'm gonna see if I can find him. Do you want me to drive? Just get in the car. Sarge? She's a bit of all right, isn't she? Not when you're stuck in a car with her, she's not. Trust me. There you go. Skimmed milk, no sugar. You've missed out the bit where I drove your car? Yeah, didn't think it was relevant to the case. Well, it was relevant to that bloke not getting away. Well, there you go. And if you don't mind, I'm going to take credit for that, because if you damaged my car, I'd have a whole load of explaining to do. Lucky I didn't, then. What about the rest of the statement? Is it all right? Looks OK. Good. Then all you need to do is sign it. You've made a street identification of one of the suspects. If he denies the offence, we'll need you to do a video identification later. Then what happens? Well, if the suspect pleads not guilty, you'll be required to go to court. Do I have to? If he pleads not guilty, yeah. Might be fun, I suppose. I can always cry. Isn't that meant to melt a judge's heart? <coughs> I've just got to take this, sorry. No, it's fine. I shall leave you to. You see those female wrestling programs? <laughs> Honey's got Amber by the hair and she's pulling her and shaking her. No. It's true. That was when Sergeant Smith walked in. He's a glamour puss. Carjacking victim is hiding something. So thanks for your help. Thanks for the wild ride. You'll be all right when you've learned some of those cut throughs. See you around. Managed to get anything out of her, Sash? She was all right in the end. Can't work her out, though. What's there to work out? Spoil it, a rich girl with too much money. Used to get in her own way. Yep, you're probably right. Nice looking, though. Not really my type. Leela. Can I ask you something? Um, <clears throat> my aftershave, is it a bit strong? Maybe just a bit. <laughs> 